In this video, we're going to look at Prim's algorithm. The algorithm allows us to find a minimum spanning tree of a network. A practical application might be connecting local towns with a water supply. We would use a minimum spanning tree to ensure that we kept the cost as low as possible. Let's start off with some basic terminology. A tree is a connected graph with no cycles. So, here is an example of a tree. A is a vertex or node. The line connecting A and B is known as an arc or an edge. So we can see each vertex is connected. If we had vertex or node H out here and it wasn't connected, then this wouldn't be a tree. This is not a tree as we've got a cycle. So C, E, G, F, C is a cycle. Therefore, this is not a tree. A spanning tree is a subgraph which includes all the vertices of the original graph. So, let's say this is called graph G. If we had now a spanning tree, it would include all of the vertices here. In general, if we have n vertices in G, we will have n minus 1 edges in our spanning tree. So, let's look at an example of a spanning tree. We could go from B to A. We could go from A to to C, we could go from A to H, we could go from H to D, we could go from H to G, we could go from G to F, and we could go from F to E. As we can see from these, these are not unique. Minimum spanning trees don't have to be unique, and as we can see, these spanning trees themselves certainly don't. So if I went from B to A, I could go now from B to C, I certainly couldn't go from C to A, as that would create a cycle. Therefore, that would not be a tree. So I could go up to D, I could go from D to H, I could go from D to E, I could go now from H to F, and I could go either from F to G, or I could go from G to H. So as we can see, these now, these spanning trees are not unique, and the minimum spanning tree is not necessarily unique. What we're now going to do is look at applying Prim's algorithm. In the question, it says use Prim's algorithm, starting A, to find four distinct minimum connectors for the network below. In each case, draw your spanning tree and make your order of arc selection clear. So straight away, we can see there are four distinct minimum connectors that we can get from this particular network. And that goes back to the idea that minimum spanning trees are not necessarily unique. Now, we're being told to start at A. What we're going to do is look at the three key points of the algorithm and applying prims and then carry that out. The first one says that we can start at any node or vertex. We're told here that we need to start at A, but in general, if you're not, you can start anywhere. So, the first part of prims algorithm is we can start anywhere. The next part, we select the edge or arc of least weight. So, we're going to start at A. What we want to do now is connect either A to B or A to C. Quite clearly, the lowest weight now is this arc here of four units. Now, this might be miles, it might be kilometers, it might be meters. So, what I want to do is either connect A to B or A to C. I'm now going to add B to my network. So, in step two of PRIMS, we're told to start where we want, and then we choose the arc or edge of lowest weight and connect up the vertex between the two. If we have now a choice, so for example here we have a choice of equal weight, we choose freely. So that is step two of Prim's algorithm. We choose now the arc or edge of lowest weight and add it now to our tree. The third step, we simply repeat until all of the vertices are connected. So all we're doing is going through step two until all of these vertices are connected. So let's start off. Let's go through those three steps. Now, we can't do step one as we're told we're starting A. So I can't choose freely. But I can now decide which one I'm going to add. Quite clearly, I'm going to choose now B. So I've connected B to my minimum spanning tree. So what I'm going to write here in order, we're going to have A, B. And I'm going to put the weight. It's going to be four units. At this stage, I now have the choice. I can connect A to C, I, connect, I can connect B to C, or I can connect B to D. As we can see from here, the lowest weight is going to be B to C. 
Therefore, now I'm going to connect those two and add now the vertex C to my minimum spanning tree. So what I've done, and I'm doing this in order, and you might want to put one, you might want to put two to show that you're doing this in order. We've got BC and its weight is eight units. Quite clearly now on my next choice, I'm not going to choose A to C. Both A and C are in my minimum spanning tree and with prims, we're not going to create a cycle as that wouldn't be a tree and we wouldn't want to do it anyway as they're already connected. So let's look at my choices. B to D, 21. I can do C to D, 10. I can do C to E, which is 11. I'm going to choose the arc of lowest weight and that is going to be C to D. So I'm now connecting D to my minimum spanning tree. So for example, these might be villages and I'm connecting cables to them and I'm wanting to keep the cost as low as possible. So this might be a network of towns or villages and this is an electricity supply. So my third choice now is going to be D. So we go C to D and that's going to be 10 units. We might want to call them kilometers. We're not told, but that's just the weight. Okay, at this stage, I've now got some choices. I could go C to E, I could go D to E. I could go D to F, or I could go from D to J. D to E is nine units, that is of lowest weight, therefore I'm gonna connect D to E. So my fourth choice, and I'm writing this here, fourth choice is going to be D to E, and we're going to end up now with nine. Now this necessarily won't be in order of the lowest first, it's just the lowest option that we've got. So let's go ahead and choose the next one. Quite clearly, I'm not going to do C to E as both of these now are in the minimum spanning tree. I've got a choice, D to J. I've got a feeling that's going to be hanging around some time. I can go from D to F, which is 10, E to G, which is 16. From here, we're going to choose now D to F. So let's do D to F. D to F has a weight of 10 units. So that now is number five, and we've got D to F. So D to F is going to be 10 units. Okay, we're now here. We could choose D to J, I could choose F to I, F to G, or E to G. Now, in the wording of the question, it tells me I'm to find four distinct minimum connectors. The minimum connector is simply now the minimum spanning tree. This goes back to the second part of Prim's algorithm. In the second part, it says, if I have a choice of equal weight, I can choose freely. And that's what I'm going to do right here. So I've got a choice of FI or FG. I'm going to choose FG. Okay, so I'm now going to connect FG. So let's just do that. Let's pick that up and connect that. Let's make it look a little neater. I'm now going to add FG. So that arc FG is added. So let's put that on. And FG is going to be eight units. Now, at this stage, I'm faced with yet another decision. DJ, FI, I could go GH. Again, we don't want D to J as it's quite clearly a lot larger or the weight is far more than the others. I could go to FI from F to I or I could go from G to H. I can choose freely as both of these have a weight of eight units. This time I'm gonna do FI and as you can now see, the minimum spanning tree for this particular network is not unique. So let's put seven and we're gonna put F, I, and that's going to be eight, uh, and that'll be eight units. Okay, let's go again. D to J, I to J, I to K, we could go G to H, or we could go from I to H. Now, again, I've got a choice. So what I'm going to do this time is G to H. So as you can see, I'm only going to do one of these. I'll let you do the other three. But we can see that we've got so many options at certain points that we're going to essentially find at least four of these. Okay, so let's put up eight. And then we're going to have G to H, which is going to be eight. Okay, choices again. My choices now are D to J. I can go I to J. I can go I to K. I cannot do I to H as that will create a cycle. I could do H to L. H to L is six, lowest weight, going to add that. So H to L. 
So let's do that. Put in nine, we've got H to L, and that's going to give me six units. So let's see what I can do from here. Again, I think it's quite clear which we're gonna choose. D to J, I to J, I to K, or we could go from L to K. Again, we're not gonna do I to H as we create a cycle, and therefore we're going to choose L to K. Okay, so let's have a look. So L to K, that's gonna be seven units. So let's put that on L to K, number 10. So L to K, L to K is seven units. Okay, we just need to be a bit careful here. We've now got J. J is the only outstanding vertex that we need to connect. So what are my choices? D to J, 24. I to J, we've got now nine. K to J. Now, if we consider this I to K, although it looks tempting, it's going to create a cycle. We don't want to do that. We don't want to go to K. We want to connect J. So quite clearly, I to J is of lowest weight, and we're going to add nine to the network. So the 11th one, in order, now we've got I to J, and that's going to give us now a weight of nine. So there we go. If you wanted to uh, count the vertices or you knew your alphabet, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Therefore, we should have eleven arcs connected. Remember, if we've got n vertices, we've got n minus one edges or arcs. So this is one example of a minimum spanning tree. If we were asked now for the minimum weight, we would simply add all of these numbers up. So it'd be 4 plus 8 plus 10 and so on and so forth, and then give the correct units based on the question. So this is one example of a minimum spanning tree using Prim's algorithm. Let's just go through the algorithm again. Step 1 says we can start at any node or vertex unless told otherwise. Step 2 we select the edge or arc of lowest weight and connect an unconnected vertex to a connected one. If we have a choice where we have the same weight on the arc, we choose freely. The third step, we repeat step two until all of the vertices are connected. Then we end the algorithm with a minimum spanning tree and generally we add up now the weight and that will be our minimum weight for our spanning tree. So there we go. That's a nice example of using Prim's algorithm to find a minimum spanning tree. In the next video, we will look at Kruskal's algorithm and that will do the, exactly the same thing, just by a different method.